Let's get it. All right. Let's check her out. Oops. Here we go. Nice little problem. Hmm. What to do? 4 minus 3x squared up top. We got x times, I think, uh, do you mind? Let's just expand that denominator so we can take a look at it. Actually, I don't like things that's not in descending order. You know I mean, I might miss something if it's in not in descending order. We bring that through and we get an x cubed minus 4x. Well, hmm, should we have done it this way instead? What do you think? Should we do a PFD? Because this is set up for a PFD. It's ready to go. Not too bad of a PFD. It's pretty straightforward. I think we could do it that way, couldn't we? I think we could. But I'm not sure if that's needed. It's not the wrong way. It's probably just the long way. So there's a couple different ways that we can see that we could solve this problem. But wait. Wait. Oops, I forgot to wrap my DX. I'm like, something looks weird over here. I forgot my DX. You know, you could do a U sub on this. Do you see it? U is equal to X cubed minus 4X. Therefore, DU is equal to positive 3X squared minus 4DX. And if you were to factor a negative 1 out of it, you would get negative 3X squared plus 4DX. And it worked out perfectly. We'd get a negative from here. We get our u down below. There it is. It's the negative natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Which is equal to the negative natural log of x cubed minus 4x all plus c. And there's a solution. Once again, there was more than one way through the problem. We could have gone this direction. For me personally, I like to always think of it this way. I kind of have, well, I want to do power rule first. I mean, that's always first. Um, then I think U subs. Then if there's trig in it, I think trig. But this is kind of like my rule. I start with, like, can I just do a power rule? Shoot. All right. Next, I move down to, all right, let's see if we can't do a U sub. Because that's just one of those that's my personal preference. And this is just talking about x's. So there's trig in it. You should probably do some trig. Then I'm going to start thinking of it. None of that's going to work. I'm probably thinking parts next. And then if you have to, I was like, all right, well, maybe a trig sub. And then lastly, I'm thinking PFDs. Because PFDs take so gosh darn long. So I kind of have a, a hierarchy. But it depends upon the problem. But I almost always want to start and just think, is there a possibility of doing a U-sub? Because I can do U-subs. I can do U-subs in Calc 1. We're almost halfway through Calc 2, and uh, I'm a pro with it now. So there's some thoughts. There's some thoughts. All right, let's go to another problem. Of course, I gave myself too much room this time. Oops. All right. Ln of 1 plus x squared. This should jump off the page at you. This should be a, oh, I know exactly what this is. Because there's really only one choice. There's no u sub to do. You can't take the 1 plus x squared and call it u. It's not going to work. It's not power rule for certainty. So next on the list is parts. But parts is when you have a single term, one thingy. You're like, parts, let's go with that. Let's say that that's parts. Because a single term, we can call this our u, and we can call this our dv. So single terms are a great spot for parts. So we'll say, uh, let u equal the natural log of 1 plus x squared. And we're going to take our dv and just call that dx. So our du is going to be, what is that? It's 1 plus x squared. That goes down below. And then the derivative of 1 plus x squared, that's 2x. And we put in our dx. And then our v is just going to be equal to x. Because that's a 1 times the dx. We're taking the 1. 
So let's let's handle it. It tells us that we're going to get a u times a v. So x times the natural log of 1 plus x squared minus the integral of v du. Oh, there we be. But what do we do at this point? What do we do at this point? Oh, I remember. I remember because a u sub is not going to work. Now let's take out that 2 real quick. Get an x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. What do we do? U sub sir, sure as heck ain't going to work here. <gasps> Look at this. The degree at the top is the same as the degree at the bottom. Let's do long division. So x squared plus 1, that's the bottom, right? 1 plus x squared, we've got to write it in descending order. But hold on, hold on, let's write it differently. x squared plus no x's plus 1 goes into x squared plus no x's plus nothing. So we're like x squared times what equals x squared? That's x squared. Now we subtract them out, change all the signs, and we get negative 1. So this is equal to 1 minus so 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Ah, there it is. There it is. All these frickin' techniques, y'all. There's a lot of them. And they're tricky. They're tricky. So what do we have? x times ln of 1 plus x squared minus 2 times the quantity of x minus inverse tangent of x all plus c. Yeah, that's good. I don't see any reason why to do anything more. And we have our solution. <coughs> Many different methods. I think the moral of the story. <clears throat> don't be afraid to go the wrong way. I see students get crippled in fear. Of just like, oh, I don't want to write the wrong. Uh, and they don't write anything. Try a method. If you're wrong, cross it off the list. Go to the next. Calc 2's a lot. And if you can get through Calc 2, you can get through the rest of the calculus classes. I'm telling you. You can absolutely do that. So, all right. I think let's end this section. We'll move into 8.9 next. Improper integrals. Good stuff. All right. See ya.